Why does your mask smell like my feet? Pick up some Mask Bright today. Hey there, Papper people. We have an awesome video, hopefully. This is kind of rare, but not rare enough that people won't be somewhat interested in it. We have our good friend, Periodic Breathing. Periodic breathing is a hot mess. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen clusters of central apneas or clear airway events in your sleep HQ or your Oscar data, but maybe this will shed some light on it. Let's take a look. Now, this is a gentleman. He lives in Salt Lake City. The elevation there is roughly 5,000 feet above sea level. Uh, he's in really good shape. He's fairly young, and I say he's in his 40s. Fairly young. He rides. He's a cyclist, rides his bike all the time in excellent shape. Now... Here is what we're seeing. We are seeing several clusters of central apneas. Now, if you see clusters of central apneas either at the very beginning of your study, I'm sorry, at the very beginning of your, of your night, and maybe you see a cluster at the very end of your night, let's not worry about that too much. Sometimes that's a sleep to wake transition or a wake to sleep transition. Let's not get crazy if that's the only time it happens. However, in this case, it's happening in the center of the study and it was happening every single night. So we had a consultation through my website, AXG Sleep Diagnostics, and we are working through the problem as we speak, and I think we have some resolution. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. But first, let's take a look at this. Okay, as we scroll through, we can see that we have periods of breathing, periods of not breathing, periods of high breathing, periods of not breathing, and they don't really seem to make all that much sense. Now, there's two reasons for this to happen. Let's, let's take a look at more, though. So we see how this is just all throughout the very beginning of the study. And then if we go forward, we have another period where it's occurring again. Now this was after he got up and used the restroom. So keep that in the back of your mind. So we also, we have some other interesting things in here which I'll, I'll get to in a minute also. Okay, so what causes periodic breathing? We have a couple things. Now he is at a high elevation. When you are at a high elevation, what happens is you have the exact same amount of oxygen concentration, but the partial pressure is much, much lower. When it's much, much lower, that causes hypocapnia, which is low CO2 in your bloodstream. If you understand the way your breathing works, uh, you have these things called chemoreceptors. These, these are basically like probes or sensors in your body that tell you how much CO2 you have. It is a negative feedback system, meaning if you don't have CO2 in your bloodstream, your body says, cool, I don't need to breathe. When in fact, we can tell by this data, you do need to breathe. So basically it's getting bad feedback. And another thing that can cause this at really any elevation is if you have a slow blood circulation time. If it's really slow, you're basically getting data that's very old. And if your body is getting old data, it might think that the CO2 is at this level when really it's at this level. And so what you'll see is you're breathing it's like your body going, oh crap, and it starts to breathe real hard, then it says, oh crap, breathing too hard, and then it completely shuts off. And that's what we see in periodic breathing. Now, what else can cause this? There's another thing that is a, a hypersensitivity of your chemoreceptors. It's just extremely sensitive. Over, basically, think of it as just, it, it really overreacts to things. So some of the things you can do, and these are some of the things that I'm doing with this gentleman right now, is we really, really decreased the pressure. Um, and we're also using positional therapy. He's staying on his side because it seems like it was exacerbated when he was on his back. He claims to have no heart conditions. He's seen a cardiologist recently, no heart conditions. Laying on his side and decreasing the pressure really seemed to help. Um, the reason we had to lay on the side is look at this. If we go forward a little bit, look at this guy right here. Look at that. That is a massive hypopnea. Slow decrease, slow decrease, slow decrease, rapid increase. Now he's at 10 centimeters of water here and he is having periodic breathing really all throughout. Some of the solutions to this, uh, if he continues to live in Salt Lake City, is he's going to have to possibly use oxygen supplementation. Another thing that he could potentially do, which would probably be better, is switch to an ASV machine. Uh, but the first thing to do that we're trying is positional therapy, decreasing the pressure, and see if his chemoreceptors are actually overly sensitive and if over a period of time they desensitize. What we have here though is a difficulty with the, uh, what you would call like overlap or complex sleep apnea. He's having central apneas at, this, at the same time, on the same pressure, he's having obstructive events like this obstructive hypopnea. He has other things in there such as respiratory effort related arousals. 
So that puts you in a funny position. Usually as you increase the pressure, obstructive events will go away. And then you have a little window here of good breathing and usually that equates to good sleeping. And if you continue going higher, you have central apneas. We has this spot here where his obstructive apneas and his central apneas meet in the middle and you're having them at the same pressure. So that's a little bit tricky. So we'll have to see what happens here. I'm already cautiously optimistic as we do have some extra data after this that looked really, really good. Just wanted to share this information with you. Guys, if you haven't yet, check out the sponsor of my video and the sponsor of this channel, cpapsupplies.com. They're really helping to support this channel and in doing so, let's help support them. If you have any mask needs, go ahead and buy from cpapsupplies.com. You can use my discount code LEFTY20, save 20% off whatever they got. They have some nice inexpensive machines you can buy there. I've already heard a lot of great, great positive things about people who have used them. They very, very much want their customer support to be the best in the business, and I think they're doing a great job. If you have yet to like this video, go ahead and do that. It really helps me out. Comment in the comment section down below. It really helps me out as well. Offer your opinions of this. Some of this stuff is super complex, and I'm sure I dicked it up on some level. Last thing is I want to thank all the Patreon supporters, all the YouTube members, all the people that send donations via PayPal. I really appreciate you guys. And if you're looking to up your CPAP game, whoop, whoop. <laughs> if you want to do a consultation with me, check out my website, axgsleepdiagnostics.com. I'll look at your data, make several recommendations, and we will usually get you sleeping much, much better. Thank you for watching, guys. More to come. Bye. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy. To Doug Toombs, Jason Georgiades, Patricia Espelong, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Mona Swearingen, Chung Chu Chen, and Edward Steiner. As well as a big thank you to all my other Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Little tiny thanks, buddy, for you guys.